In this video, I'm going to show outputting from the 286 processor to a pair of LED bar graphs. Before I get to that, let me show you some quick updates I've made to my breadboard. Here is what it looked like at the end of the last video, and I had mentioned that I was going to move or remove some of these ICs and move that logic into this PSOC chip. I've done that, and here is what it now looks like. Uh, and I'll talk through some of this uh, in an upcoming uh, video clip that I'm going to play, uh, just showing the system running. It's a bit cleaner, a bit easier to manage, so I'm happy with the way it looks at this point, uh, especially compared to where it was. Now as far as the decode logic or this output enable logic for the different chips, this is what it currently looks like. Uh, I, I have added, you'll notice at the very bottom, an IO write enable. And that's basically going to allow me to write to these LED bar graphs. That logic is sitting inside of a PSOC, and that PSOC I've added to the primary schematic, and I've removed all of that decode logic from this, this specific schematic. So you'll see in the lower left is this PSOC, and just to keep the schematic pretty clean, at least for my own reference, uh, what you'll see here is that uh, this is that PSOC I'm using. Uh, I've got my main signals coming from my processor that I'm using to determine output enables. I'm also bringing in my reset from my reset card because that uh, was used for my 65816 system and there the reset is a low. So I've got a low coming in and I actually send out a high reset which the 286 expects to have. Then I've got some debug LEDs that will show me whether I'm reading or writing RAM, reading ROM, or writing to I.O. And then I have a new output enable, which or a new enable signal for I.O. and it's an I.O. write enable. And then I've got my RAM, ROM, output and write enables down here also. Uh, the other thing I've done to this uh, schematic specifically is I have added uh, up here to the right, a pair of LED bar graphs, and then also a pair of 573 latches. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and latch values and then write those or show those on this LED bar graph for the lower and an LED bar graph for the upper bytes within the word that I am outputting from the processor. And what's going to control that is this I.O write enable which is coming from the PSOC down here which is based on these inputs and then if I back up a slide this is the logic that I'm actually looking at to determine that I'm doing a write to this IO range and uh, I'll show you that there's also another way to do writing to IO but this is the way that I'm doing it uh, for this specific setup. Now as far as I.O. or input output is concerned, for the 286 processor there are two ways to do it. One is a memory mapped I.O. and that's what I'm really familiar with coming from the 6502 processor and the 65816. All the I.O. I did, for example, to a VIA was done with memory mapped. So I would basically in my address decode uh, have to set up a space for the I.O. device and then I could read and write those memory addresses to to basically engage or work with uh, those I.O. devices. Uh, the 286 has another option which is to use a separate I.O. space uh, so it doesn't have to be part of your memory map. Uh, it's completely separate. It has its own 64K section of memory and basically there's a signal out of the processor that flips and says you're now working with I.O. instead of with your normal memory. Um, so it's a 64K um, area that I can work in and so I can have 64,000 uh, 8-bit ports or half as many 16-bit ports and really I can work from this address of 0 down to 2 bytes worth uh, so FFFF um, to be able to refer to those I.O. ports. And so basically they have their own addresses. It's independent of my RAM and ROM. And uh, the way that it works then is I only get uh, two instructions that I can use. There's an in instruction and an out instruction. 
I'm, so with the out, it's just like it sounds. I'm going to send something out to an I.O. port. In, I'm going to read from an I.O. port. And this is the code that I am going to have running here in the a clip coming up. Um, so this is current assembly. Again, I'm new to a, this assembly for Intel. Uh, so I, if, if you catch any uh, major issues with this, let me know. Um, but the main things to point out here, um, when the processor starts, it wants to start reading at an address of FFFF0. And that's what uh, I've got this at right here. So this reset label will be at that address. And these uh, times lines fill in content basically in my ROM. And so I'm going to fill in a bunch of zeros. I'm going to fill in a bunch of knobs. Basically, I'm going to fill up this uh, ROM for the full uh, one meg, which I'm only using the top half of it. Um, but basically, uh, in my ROM, I make sure I fill all the way up to FFFF0 uh, or that equivalent so that when it turns on, it's going to start reading here. And what I then do right away is I jump to this address. And that address is going to be this label up here. So my processor turns on. It reads this. It says, okay, jump up to here. It jumps up to here and it proceeds with this code, which I then jump back up. So then this is just going to run in a loop. Uh, and what this code is doing is it's pretty simple. So I'm going to take this value, F0, F0, and put it into my 16-bit A register. I'm then going to take the value in that A register and write it out using that out instruction to the address of 0F. I put a few, a few knobs in there just so that as I'm stepping through this, I had a little bit more time to, to react to what I was seeing uh, on the LED bar graphs. Then I continue and I, I move into a B register, uh, this hex value 1000. And then I say, okay, uh, go ahead and go to that register, grab the value and treat that as an address. So I guess in my mind, I, I think of this as like a pointer. So in that memory address at hex 1000, write the value 0F0F. F. Uh, I then turn around and I read from that location of memory and I put it in a different register, which is the A register. The reason I'm doing that is I'm just trying to make sure that my writing and reading uh, to and from RAM is working. Uh, then I turn around and I say, okay, uh, now that you've read back that value and put it into the A register, write the value out to this IO address of 0F. And then again, I've got some knobs just to give me a little time uh, as I'm uh, manually stepping through it. And then go ahead and jump and repeat the, repeat the whole thing. Um, so I believe that uh, is is a proper explanation for what you're seeing here. Uh, hopefully I got that uh, right or pretty close to right. But that is the code I'm running, and uh, it uh, does appear to be working for me. So here you're seeing the system running that uh, assembly code that you just saw. A couple things to point out. You know, I've got my my flash ROM, my RAM. I got the PSOC there. I've labeled those LEDs above just to show you what they're indicating. But then notice to the lower left, I've got these latches, pair of latches, and a pair of LED bar graphs. And I am writing out the F0 F0, and then also a 0 F0 F. And that's what you're seeing on those LED bar graphs. You'll also notice that uh, the PSOC, I have the USB programmer hooked up to it right now, but that can easily be removed at any point. As far as what's up next, uh, what I have worked on so far really is just this 286 processor. You know, I have not used any of these other uh, supporting ICs that would normally be used in the basic design from Intel. I do now have in hand the 284 clock generator and the 288 bus controller. So I am going to work on trying to uh, connect those up and see if I can remove my clock card, my reset card, and use this clock generator instead. And I notice as I look at the bus controller, a lot of what's coming out of that is stuff that I've been doing in the PSOC. So uh, I think my PSOC will get simplified if not removed. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I think I'll still have some ad address decoding that I need to do uh, that I'll do in the PSOC. Um, but things like, am I going to write to I.O.? Well, there's already a signal coming out of this that tells me that. So I don't have to do that decode or understanding of S1, S0, um, and some of these other signals that uh, I have been using up to this point. 
like uh, C O D and A and M I O. Uh, so that's that's on my list of things to do. Get those two chips, put them in next. Uh, I still have, I think, quite a wait to get some of these over here on the right. Um, I'm finding that getting the 82 C82 is a little bit tricky right now, or it's expensive, uh, one or the other. And I'm opting to uh, go slow versus spend a lot of money on on those chips. And I may also try to get an LCD going. Uh, it seems like if I can get uh, values latched and output um, successfully, which I have done, getting to the point of writing to an LCD, reading the status if it's busy or not, uh, I think is within reach. I should be pretty close to that. So that's something I'm going to be working on here uh, pretty soon. Uh, so thanks for watching. More to come.